Greetings folks. I'm doing some research to see if I can run a netbook, which is a small laptop, directly off of a solar panel. For this experiment, I'll be using a single 100 watt solar panel, which is mounted on the wall of my workshop. This netbook does not have a battery in it, so it has no source of power except what I put into the DC power jack. Over here I have a DC watt meter. It is not particularly accurate, but it's enough to see what the panel is doing. This netbook is rated for about 20 volts input. They're usually around 19 to 20 volts. The battery that's in there is usually a three cell system, so it's not going to put out anywhere near 19 volts. This particular netbook is a model CQ10-688NR. It's made by Compaq. It's known as a Compaq Mini. I do not expect full power from the solar panel, probably around 20 to 30 watts at the very best. I've gone ahead and plugged in a cable and I placed an adapter on the end. This is the cable I'll be using, and I use an adapter because the netbook has a different type of connector on it. And I'm just going to plug it in and see what happens. Okay, I plugged it in. Power switches on the side here. You can hear the fan running. And there it goes. So we're looking at about uh, 18 volts on the panel. It's drawing about 10 to 12 watts, now it's 13 watts. So it's running. Let's see if it can boot. This laptop still has a mechanical hard drive. I have not upgraded it to an SSD yet, but it's a worst case scenario experiment and a mechanical hard drive does use more power. So it booted to the desktop and it acts exactly like it does on battery. The solar panel is down to around 16 and a half, maybe 17 volts. This laptop has an Atom N455 processor. It's running Windows 7. And it appears to run like a champ. I'm not having any problems. It runs exactly the way I would expect it to run. So what's the trick here? The trick here is that the laptop, or netbook I should say, does not run off of 19.5 volts. It runs off of a much lower voltage. It makes sense that they would put 19 volts over a long skinny cord into a laptop, even though the laptop doesn't use anything near 19 volts to operate. And again, just to show that there is no battery in the unit, I'm going to carefully Turn it over and you can see there's where the battery goes. It's empty, there's no battery there. Just went to 100% CPU there for a moment. There is a flicker on the screen, but that's only from the camera. You can see the CPU is doing a little bit of work. And the voltage is 17 point something volts. It's moving around quite a bit. It's using about eight watts, six to eight watts. And just to show that it really is running off of a solar panel. First, there's no battery in the unit. You can see this is where the battery would go. It goes right in this area here. I've taken the battery out. Here's a cable right here. This is a very thin, cheap 2.1 millimeter cable. These are common in security cameras and whatnot. That's an adapter because it does not fit this laptop. By the way, this is my Ryobi solar battery charger. You can see it charging. This is running off of a separate solar panel, not the same one that's running this netbook. And this is charging a, yes, a generic battery. It's not a real Ryobi. I have real Ryobi batteries, but it will charge both kinds. It runs directly off of a 100 watt solar panel or even a 50 watt solar panel, straight to a solar panel. There's nothing else connected. If you're interested in knowing how to make one, just check out my uploads. It's very easy. And this is one of my favorite pieces of electronics right here. Very useful. And simply a 50 to 100 watt solar panel. You can charge Ryobi batteries all day long, continuously, with no limit. A 100 watt solar panel is probably a better choice. That's what's running it right now. So this wire comes out, goes to a separate 100 watt solar panel. It's got nothing to do with this. It comes down here. And over here it gets a bit complicated. But it's really quite simple. This is just a terminal box. This is a cable that goes to my meter right here. And that wire for the meter, it's a little hard to see. It comes back through here, comes right along here. A whole lot of wires here and goes right outside. So that's the solar panel. And I'll insert some footage of that. I actually brightened up the screen backlight. I had it dimmed all the way down. So it runs fine. But let's be clear, not all netbooks are going to run off of a solar panel. A solar panel is an unregulated source. It varies its voltage quite a lot. And the voltage jumps all around, all over the place on the solar panel while the netbook is in use. This is an experiment just to see what would happen for research purposes. Some netbooks will not accept a lower voltage than 19 or so volts. They know something's wrong, they know what's plugged into it, and they just reject the low voltage and they won't turn on. Other netbooks, well, like this one here, will accept a lower voltage and they will turn on. It all depends on which netbook or which device you're plugging in. A much more interesting question is whether you can charge a netbook off of a solar panel, not necessarily running it off the solar panel. 
So I went ahead and put the battery in. As you can see, there is an icon there showing that the battery is now charging. I've inserted the battery in the notebook or netbook, and there's an icon saying that it's charging. So very interesting. You can not only run a netbook off of a solar panel directly, you can, of course, put the battery in it and have that battery charge and run the notebook or netbook all day. You could attach the solar panel to the netbook and use that to extend or increase the runtime to the point that the battery never runs down. I believe this experiment is a success. Running a netbook directly off a solar panel is not necessarily going to be something that's immediately useful to me, but it did work. So now by adding the battery into the netbook, I essentially have an off-grid netbook that can be powered by solar indefinitely for a very long period of time. And just a quick warning here, it's very risky to plug a solar panel directly into any electronic device like this. You can easily burn the device out and there would be no easy or quick way to repair it. In this case, I did my research and I was very careful and was pretty confident that it would work. But if you don't pay attention to the voltages, you can easily burn out a netbook or any device. I know the solar panels very well that I'm using for this experiment and I know what their voltages usually are over a wide variety of conditions. So I was not at all concerned in this case about burning out my netbook. Well, I'm just going to let my netbook sit here and charge off of the solar panel for free. I'm going to wrap the video up here. I don't want it to get too long. I'm working on some other things for future videos, but those are not done yet. Hope you enjoyed this short experiment. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.